God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the senior pastor of the church. Our audio message title today is Let It Go. I will be reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, and verse 18. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. My beloved, what do you do when your memory drags the there and then into here and now, immersing you in the same old pain? The Bible says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Your past can infect your present and influence your future unless you decide to let it go. So let's talk about that for a moment. Let's really think about it. I want to give you a couple things that will help you to let go of the past. One, let it go. Remember that when you confess it, God has forgiven you. God's only response to confess sin is to forgive and forget it. If it comes up again, you, not he, brought it up. First John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There are two things that make letting go so difficult. One, your feelings. I just don't feel forgiven, you may say. You're forgiven by God's grace obtained through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, regardless of how you feel. Don't wait to feel it before you accept it. Accept it, and you will start to feel it. Two, a wrong concept of God is one way where you continue to feel this unforgiveness. So you say, my dad says he forgives me, but each time I fail, all my old offenses are thrown in my face again. But your heavenly father doesn't operate that way, my beloved. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 25 says, I, even I, am he who who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. God doesn't bring them up again, my beloved, because he doesn't remember them. All your sins were judged and paid for at Calvary. Once confessed, you'll never again be charged with them. So rejoice and let them go. The court of heaven has ruled that you are not guilty. A second point, let go of what others have done to you. Thorns come with roses, and hurts come with human relationships, and few hurts go as deeply as those inflicted by friends and family. Ask Joseph. You remember Joseph in the book of Genesis. His brothers sold him into slavery, and he was locked up in a foreign prison in Egypt, and he was there for a sin that he never committed. It's the stuff bitterness, depression, despair, and defeat are made of. And who'd have blamed him? Would you have blamed him for feeling bitter and depressed and in despair or defeat? No, because he was unjustly imprisoned. But the one thing is that Joseph knew that he, not his abusers, had the last word. My beloved, he knew that it was up to him to forgive them. And his forgiveness for others would decide his future. You see, my beloved, others can wound you, but no one can destroy you without your permission and cooperation. It's not what they do to you that determines your outcomes. It is what you do next. Joseph decided to let the offenses go and accept responsibility for his own actions. When you do that, you take back your power, open yourself to new options, and make choices that position you to come out of it a lot stronger, wiser, and more blessed. So my beloved, remember, Joseph refused to become a victim of other people's actions. As a result, God made him ruler over all Egypt. He prepared for the future. How? By excelling in his prophetic and administrative gifts, even though he was in prison. So my beloved, choose to see it God's way. Let go of these hurts, the past, because you can't do anything about it. But look to your future. Don't be tormented by what others have done unto you, but rather do what you have been called to do and watch God vindicate you in a great way. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this message today. Thank you for the blessing because we know that we have all been hurt by someone. Thank you for letting us know that we can be entrapped by our own unforgiveness. Let us learn to receive your forgiveness once we confess our sins and not keep bitterness within us. Not allow this emotion of bitterness to affect our work for you. Thank you, Father, for this time of prayer. As we pray in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be glory, power, and majesty now and forever. My beloved, forgive others 
move on with your life and receive the blessings of God through our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.